Rising above the wooded bluff of the Rock River Valley stands one of the most important and best known works of Laredo Taft. Today the statue is the centerpiece of Loudoun State Park, but back during the 1800s, before the statue's creation, the land belonged to the Eagle Nest Art Colony, of which Taft was a member. One evening as they were standing on the bluff overlooking the river, enjoying the view, he noticed that they were all standing there with their arms crossed. And that's how the concept of the uh, eternal Indian was, uh, came about. At that point, Taft uh, started working on a small model in his uh, studio with a young sculptor named John Pration. Pration was an excellent choice since Taft had decided to work in a new medium, one which had not yet been used in the art world, concrete. Prior to joining the art colony, Pration worked in construction and was familiar with the properties of concrete. Taft left him in charge of the project. For that era, the creation of this statue was a masterpiece of engineering and artistry, which would be written about in several renowned publications. The next step in creating the statue was to erect a life-size mold into which the concrete would be poured. From there, the framework was constructed using large timbers for the whole overall height and shape. The wooden frame was covered with chicken wire, some burlap, and plaster of Paris. By December of 1910, the mold was ready and the pouring of concrete began. It was an operation completed by working 24 hours a day over 10 days while enduring freezing temperatures. 65,000 gallons of water were pumped to the site from the river below and was used to maintain two st steam engines and also for the making of the cement. There was also a 5,000 gallon tank plus boilers to heat the water. In the end, 238 yards of concrete was used, along with 38 one-inch steel reinforcing bars, plus 20 tons of pink granite chips to give the finished statue an added luster. He weighs 270 tons, with the head alone topping the scales at 30 tons. The statue stands 448 feet, 4 inches tall, and sits atop a 14-foot, 8-inch pedestal, of which only 5 foot is exposed. The head was poured separately and then hoisted by a derrick and put in place. The pouring operation was completed on December 20, 1910, and the statue was left to cure until spring. Then in warmer weather, workers began to chip away the mold and uncover the finished piece. It was a colossal success and has remained part of the landscape for over a hundred years. It's now believed to be the second tallest monolithic statue in the world, and one that has been mistakenly named. Throughout the decade, visitors have often referred to the statue as Black Hawk, but in reality, Taft never titled this piece. He later said he had studied several tribes while composing the statue and that it was a composite of all the tribes. Generations have come to view this work, which after a hundred years is showing signs of its age. If you look closely at the sculpture or statue, you can see that the, the arms are the bad, are the areas that are starting to uh, disintegrate. Uh, the, they said the main body of the statue is in very good condition. Uh, there are some hairline cracks on the head. We had a study done about two years ago uh, to have the, uh, get an estimate what it would cost to have the repairs done. At that point in time, the repair cost was uh, 400 to $450,000. Recently, the statue was added to the National Register of Historic Places, and efforts are underway to gather the funds necessary to ensure its survival. Today, the work of both Taft and Pration stands as a tribute to two past entities. It's a majestic reminder of those who preceded the Europeans and had first gazed on the river valley. In addition, the statue is the only permanent marker of an art colony that once thrived on these bluffs. To contact Loudoun State Park, call 815-732-6828 